Filters are the bedrock feature of Intercom. They enable us to segment and laser target our communication to our users and leads. In this video, I'm going to bring you to the basics of filtering within Intercom. I'll use filters to group together a few different audiences that might be useful when you start using Intercom to message your users. To do this, we'll filter via the people section of the platform. As you can see, we have all of our users listed here and we have the filtering section to the left. The first audience I'll filter for is for trial users who are currently on a free plan. So we'll find the attribute plan name, which is a string value, and we'll select it. As you can see, once we select it, we're given a number of different options to filter. We have is or is not, which let us filter to include an exact string or exclude an exact string. So to target users who are on our free plan, we would set plan name to is free. If we set it to is not, we would see all the users who aren't on the free plan. Along with those, we have starts with and ends with, which lets us filter using the first or last few letters in a string. Next, we have contains and does not contain, which let us filter parts of a string that we know and want to include or exclude. So we could set the filter to contains free if there were a number of free plans that we offer. Finally, we have is unknown and has any value. Using is unknown will show the users where the attribute doesn't yet have a value associated to it. Has any value will show all the users who have any value present and it'll exclude all the users where that value is unknown. The next audience I'll filter for will be for loyal customers. These would be users who signed up maybe when you first launched, but who are still active. So to do this, we'll find and select the signed up date value. And as you can see, once we select it, we have a few different filter options. We have more than, exactly, and less than, which are the relative date filters. These let us filter based on a number of days ago. The other options are the absolute date filters. These let us filter based around an exact date. So for this, we have after, on, before, is unknown, and has any value. If we select one, you can see we have the option to filter around a specific date. For this, however, we'll select more than and set it to 365 days ago. To take this a bit further, we'll add another filter to make sure they're actually active. To do this, we'll add a filter on last seen and web sessions. We'll set last seen to less than 10 days ago, and we'll set web sessions to is greater than 50. So this audience of loyal users would be people who signed up more than a year ago, who were last seen less than 10 days ago, and who have more than 50 web sessions. Another valuable audience that we might target are people who signed up but never got active in our app. To filter for this audience, we'll use signed up and we'll set it to more than 30 days ago. Then we'll target the people from that group who didn't really get active. To do this, we'll filter on web sessions and set it to less than five. So this audience will be people who signed up more than 30 days ago and who had less than five web sessions. The last audience I'll filter for are users who are from Spain. To do this, we can use the country filter. We'll select it and set the filter to is Spain. We could take this filter a bit further by adding multiple countries. So let's say we want to target people who are from Spain or Portugal. To do this, 
we'll need to first add a filter to target Portugal as well as Spain. So we'll click add filter and set it to is Portugal. Now, to make sure it's people from either Spain or Portugal, we simply switch the condition to match any of these filters instead of all of these filters. As well as that, we can also change the filtering to target leads instead of users, like so. Next, you might want to filter for a group of users who you've tagged with do not message. To do this, we simply click the tag filter, select is, and then select the tag from the list. Finally, we can filter on an event to see how many times it has occurred. For this, let's use this made purchase event and filter to find the users who have made more than 20 purchases. You'll see if I select it, we're given three options. We can filter the count, which is the amount of times that has happened. And then we can filter for either the first time it occurred or last time it occurred. Let's filter for users who have made more than 20 purchases by selecting count and setting it to more than 20. And that's it. That's the basics of filtering. In our next video, we'll show you how you would save a filtered group of users to reference from later. That's called creating a segment.